media discourse 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 media to call him a lightweight, okay? And I have said that, so I would like to take that back. He's really not that much of a lightweight. I can only imagine that everyone's nerves are on edge. And as far as, and I have to say this, I have to say this, he hit my hands. Nobody has ever hit my hands. I've never heard of this one. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> They bitch and complain about everything, and they over-exaggerate. I just, I mean, their story was pretty elaborate. And he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. This is all just really upsetting. He is distraught and devastated. I mean, anything, I think, will set him to spiral, and that's kind of the last thing I want for him. knows that. Once again, I am running a campaign differently than any other candidate. John. We are relying on small campaign donors, 750,000 of them, 30 bucks a piece. He wants to make a change. I just think he really doesn't know how to get there. He has basically, he has basically used gets to his answer to impugn my integrity. Let's be no, frank here. Oh, wait a minute. If you know how I feel, why would you say that? Like, you put me in such an uncomfortable situation. Like, you know I'm not happy. You know I'm trying to see if it'll work out here, and I know that it's not. You know, not only do I have hundreds of thousands of donors, most of them small, and I'm very proud that for the first time, a majority of my donors are women, 60%. She's afraid to confront me. need to make sure that the really discriminatory messages that Trump is sending around the world don't fall on receptive ears. He is becoming ISIS's best recruiter. My gut and my heart is telling me that I just like did this too fast and I didn't know what I was doing. They are going to people showing videos of Donald Trump insulting Islam and Muslims in order to recruit more radical jihadists. So I want to explain why this is not in America's interest to react with this kind of fear and respond to this sort of bigotry. Even though things are changing, I think we're both kind of going through these emotions and still working through them the best we can. I feel that I am a conservative. Now, I also feel I'm a common sense conservative. Uh -huh. Same matter you of principle, and I'll, and I'll tell you. You are the single biggest liar. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. Mm -mm. There. He's a yeah. nasty guy. I'm, well, I'm, uh -huh. Looked at your pension? Daddy, have you looked at your pension? I've got to say. Uh, Mr. Pen yeah. President, have you looked at your pension? You know, I, I don't look at my pension. It's not as big as yours. Damn! Damn! This little guy has lied so much go. about my record. Here we go. The What's up, bro? What, bro? What's up, bro? Take a swing, bro. Right here, bro. Undecided voters are the biggest idiots on the planet. Try giving short, simple answers. I'm an elderly talk. woman. Let me talk. Quiet. 9-11. <laughs> He's gonna, gonna give help. us jobs. Everybody's yeah, gonna he's... have a job. Cut Everybody's taxes. gonna get a job. He's gonna, yep. It's crazy. And you know what they say about men with small hands? Oh, hell no! What about our traffic problem? Nine. Mm -hmm. Eleven. <laughs> I'll I'll spend a little more money on the commercials. <laughs>
you know, I think it was Jeb Bush spent $125 million for three weeks of his campaign trying to, to make his, his thing into something, and Trump doesn't have to do a single thing. He tweets, he tweets Mussolini's uh, quote, and this gets picked up by every single network, right? So, you know, media essentially is the discourse about politics in this country. And because the media is controlled by corporations in this country, right, what you have is a kind of eradication of the democratic, of any kind of democratic process when, when politics are essentially spectacularized, right? It's turned into a form of entertainment. That it limits what can be said, right? It limits the sayable, which means to limit the possible, which means to limit the future, right? That is, that is the plan of, 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 um, of power, right? Is to make the future look like there is no other future than the one they have prescribed, right? I mean, this, this is ideology, is to present the, the present and the future and the past as if it has always been and it will always be, that it is natural and it is normal that these things are happening in this country, that people are poor, or whatever is happening, right? And it is not the case, right? You have to denaturalize things. And the way that you do that is by asking questions, is, not, is to never ever presuppose that any of the concepts that you use or any of the things that you engage with are to be taken for granted. There's not enough of it, that's for sure. You know, media that's aware of the fact that it's media. Right? That, you know, because this is the point of, of, of things like, of, again, with this thing with like CNN, that it erases the fact that it's representation. It erases the fact that it's a form. It just presents the news as if it is the news. And, that, and the way that it presents it has nothing to do with the message that is being communicated. That it is just reporting it and the fact that there's this ticker tape underneath and that there's all this montage and there's these ridiculous experts and like Wolf Blitzer and, you know, all this bullshit that goes on on CNN. I mean, you know, all of that is, the, the, the form of it is carved out and suppressed, right? That, that, you know, that there's nothing there to look at, right? So this kind of self-reflective moment in media, right, is, you know, is some trace of its independence. This, this just gets back to the, I think, the bigger question of like what happened post-1960s in terms of, you know, like that being the last real countercultural kind of like moment and like after that it feels like everything that comes up just gets subsumed like what happened with grunge what happened with all of these different things and how quickly everything gets you know um essentially annihilated i don't have an answer to that i think i mean you know one one strategy would be to think about it on structural terms you know which is like what has happened that's changed since the 1960s in terms of globalization and global capital right that that makes resistance or counterculture essentially impossible or impotent or failed ahead of time. Um, I don't know. We can't think in monolithic terms anymore, like we can't think in, in these kind of grand revolutionary terms that if we just found the right aesthetic or we found the right form, right, if we just found, you know, a way of producing cinema that can't be, you know, subsumed, Right, that we would somehow like have a real revolution, and I think that I think things can only now be contingent or temporary, or like strategy has to come out of these like temporary moments where like something makes sense in the moment, but there can, it, that doesn't mean that for all time there's going to be like a like a final revolutionary cinema. You know what I mean? That it it was an event in the radical sense. Right, that it restructured so many things and had so many consequences politically, you know, aesthetically, that it had so many enormous consequences. And I think, I don't know, I feel like now there is some kind of, I don't know, what does it mean to make films in an era where the most traumatic event was seen by everybody on television? You know, like that, that was an event that very few people saw in person, right? The majority of the world witnessed it through television. Like, what does it mean to make films, you know, when the most traumatic event of the last 30 years happened, you know, on the television, you know, in front of audience, in front of spectators, you know, that there, there is, there's something about that, you know, that kind of demands a different kind of filmmaking. Maybe, you know, it, it raises the question of whether shock as a revolutionary strategy that, say, the surrealists or the avant-garde 
relied so heavily on, right, to readjust and challenge the spectator to see differently, whether something like that is still possible. Um, I think that, you know, the most important thing really that anybody can do, especially when they're young and they're still working on their education, is to interrogate all of the categories through which you organize your life. So whether that involves ideas like society and individuals, right, thinking about what, what is an individual, why does the United States, why does this country value the idea of the individual so much, you know, what is the difference between a society and a culture, what is politics, you know, what is discourse, what does it mean to speak, what is media. I mean, I think this is what political discourse always wants to prevent, right? It wants to totalize everything.